Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome to episode 4 in our series on foam kit bashing. We are transforming a Freewing Mirage 2000 into an Israeli Kefir. In fact, the airframe transformation has already occurred and now it's time to paint this airplane. In our last episode, we covered detailing the cockpit and showed a few easy tricks uh, to dress it up a bit and also showed you how to paint a new, more scale and correctly sized pilot figure. To see that video, you can click on the icon in the upper right corner. As mentioned, in this episode, we're covering painting the airplane. We've got an awesome four-tone Israeli camouflage scheme lined up uh, that we're going to paint, and so we're going to talk through the process of achieving that. We'll be utilizing an airbrush in the process, along with some Humbrol plastic model paints for the camouflage, and then once painted, we'll be applying our markings. First things first though, we have to get this airframe paint ready and to do that, we're simply applying multiple coats of Minwax Polycrylic and then primering over that and then we'll finish it off with some wet sanding to get it paint ready. Same exact process we used in our How to Refinish a Foam Warbird series. So you know what? It is time to get some painting done at last. So, let's go! ready for paint. As mentioned, uh, it's the same process that we used in our How to Refinish a Foam Warbird series. I did do a couple things differently here though uh, that I did want to mention. First of all, there's quite a bit of texture coming through after the initial primer coat. So I decided to spray some Rust-Oleum Gap Filler Primer. Uh, by applying this and sanding it down with a sanding block, it ended up smoothing out a lot of the imperfections uh, since it builds up the lower areas to, to even out the entire surface. You know, it's foam, so it'll never be perfect, uh, but this helped really smooth it out a bunch. One thing about this primer is it's gap filling, and so it does need like a day or two to really cure before you sand it, otherwise it just gums up your sandpaper. Also, uh, this primer is ideal for prepping 3D printed parts and getting rid of the striations you get due to the layer buildup. Now the last thing was, I had a couple areas of the pink Home Depot foam react uh, to the primer when I applied it too heavy, so it melted some areas underneath the polycrylic. Uh, to fix it, just filled it back in with some spackle and sanded it flush. Uh, I found that this shrink-free spackle from Sherwin-Williams, and it works beautifully and has a finer granularity than that Hobby Light spackle I've been using. So I used it to fill in the problem areas and basically primer back over it. For the large repairs though, I did apply a coat of polycrylic over the repair uh, before primering just to seal it up. Now for the paint scheme we have planned, uh, we're painting a Kefir C7 four-tone camouflage tail number 555 from the Arava Guardian Squadron from around 1994. This particular aircraft was called Shabtai, which is Hebrew for the word Saturn. Probably butchered the pronunciation, my apologies if you speak Hebrew. Uh, now you'll notice the coloring diagram. This is from the AMK plastic kit that I bought for this project. It provides the information we need in terms of what the scheme looks like. You know, plastic kits and decal sets are great resource for this stuff, so definitely look there. That's the first place I always go. So with that said, let's talk quickly about the painting process. To paint the camouflage, we're going to simply airbrush each of the colors freehand. This is a smaller airframe, so an airbrush will do the job well enough. If this were a larger model, then I would turn to my automotive touch-up gun, but we would need a whole lot more paint to do that, and you know we don't need to do that here. Now I have multiple airbrushes that I do keep on hand for painting and detailing, along with a dedicated airbrush compressor. I have a double action Gravity Feed Iwata and I have a double action Grex airbrush that's got a pistol grip to it. And then I also have a single action Siphon Feed Badger. With a double action airbrush, you can control the spray size with the trigger while you're painting. Whereas with the single action, you set the spray size independently of the trigger uh, and you press, you get the spray size every time. So we're actually going to use here uh, the Grex pistol grip 
airbrush uh, because it's kind of a combination double action single action I can actually set the spray size based on this screw back here and so every time I press the trigger when I go full this is going to limit the travel so that way every time I pull this trigger all the way I'm going to get the same spray size while spraying the camo you know we want the feathered edges as consistent as possible so you know this is easier to achieve with an airbrush that allows you to control the maximum spray size so whether it's single action or a double action airbrush ultimately you know guys whatever works best for you is the best way to approach this so experiment and see what works and you know what you prefer in the process now the colors are according to the plastic model coloring diagram which provides the federal standard paint numbers for each of the four colors now for paint I'm using Humbrol paints uh, which are plastic model paint that you can purchase directly through them or you may be able to find them at your local hobby store I have a link to each of the colors in my article at thercgeek.com. Now I'm applying the colors, we'll start by applying the bottom color and then we'll work on the top side camo, spraying the sand color first and then the dark tan and then we'll finish it up with that sky green color. The first color applied was the bottom which is FS36375 Light Ghost Gray. The whole bottom is a single color, so you can use a spray can here should you choose to do so. I airbrushed the whole underside with Humbrol 127. It did take a little while to get the coverage with the airbrush, but you know, airbrushing provides a nice lightweight finish, and the Humbrol paints spray really well. They recommend a thinning ratio of about two parts paint to one part thinner. Uh, you're basically looking for the consistency of fat-free milk from the paint. Uh, for it to be spray ready. Also when you spray you'll know if it's too thick if the airbrush isn't spraying well uh, and you get rough overspray and if it's too thin if the color just isn't going down at all. With the bottom done it was on to the top. The first color applied was FS33531 sand uh, which is the lightest color. I used Humbrol 121 here and applied that color in just the necessary areas on the airframe using the color diagram as a guide. It's important to overspray the area sufficiently as you'll be coming back and defining the final camouflage pattern uh, with the other two colors. Once the sand color was down, I used a light pencil uh, to sketch out the approximate camouflage pattern onto the airframe. This helps give us a guide while we paint. You know, you can certainly do this without the guidelines, but when you're doing this all freehand, it definitely helps uh, so we know where we're painting. The key too is to make sure to paint over the pencil so there's no appearance of it coming through. Uh, the, you know, this was all done freehand, I just kind of sketched it on. Okay, so with the pattern laid out in pencil, uh, the next color sprayed was FS30219 Dark Tan. The way that I approached it was to spray along the separation lines first uh, to get that faded separation. Then from there, the color was filled in. When spraying the separations, try to use smooth strokes and use two hands if you need to to stabilize it. I attacked it in sections and moved progressively along the separations to get what I was looking for. It takes practice and it's far from perfect, uh, but the beauty is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's camouflage and the whole intention here uh, is to make the whole aircraft surfaces uneven. Finally, with the dark tan down, FS34424 Sky Green uh, was sprayed in the same fashion. The green fade over the dark tan looks better than the other way around, so this is why it was sprayed in this order. This completed all of the colors, but there are definitely some areas needing touch-up based on some stray spray lines or separations I was a little unhappy with. So to touch this up, I first went back and touched up the gray underside separation along the fuselage. You know, it's tough to get a perfect straight line spraying multiple colors, so this cleaned this up wonderfully. From there, I went around and touched up all of the other colors on the top to clean it all up. One thing to remember though, you know, as you do this, when you touch up those separation lines, you'll likely have to touch up both colors to get the correct look on the fade. What I mean is that, you know, there were a few areas of the sand that I needed to touch up. So I did that and then went back and retouched up the dark tan along the separation to get the right look on the fade and keep it consistent with the rest of the airplane. Otherwise, it ends up looking a little too uneven. Now, to finish it all out, the first few details were painted starting with the turkey feathers and the exhaust area. This was all painted with outclad dark aluminum. We'll add some soot in there later in our weathering video. The nose and tail tip details, those were painted flat black. 
So here is the fully painted airplane, and it, you know, it's pretty awesome, I have to say. The colors of the Israeli camouflage are unmistakable, and they really bring the airplane to life. Now, let's get some markings down. All right, the airplane's painted. Time to add some markings. These are vinyl graphics that I had made by Cali Graphics. I went this route because frankly, I just wanted to save time and didn't want to go through the process of completely making my own. All of the markings come as pre-cut vinyl with transfer tape applied to them. So it's really a matter of simply removing the vinyl from the backing, applying it to the model, and then removing that transfer tape. Cali has some good instructions on applying the vinyl where you can put them down on a wet surface or a dry surface. I just put them down dry, you know, but the key is to not press the vinyl to the surface fully until it's exactly where you want it. There were a couple of the markings that weren't quite right that I had to correct. You know, Cali would have happily fixed them, but that would have delayed me another week or so, uh, and I just didn't want to wait. So for those items needing a little help, I simply made my own decals in the same manner as I covered in my discussion on making markings. Uh, and then applied them to the model. In the process, I ended up making all of the Hebrew nomenclature on the airplane too, since I was looking to fill up a decal sheet anyways. Now I'm really glad I did because it looks great with all of that extra detail on it. Now the only thing is that I didn't put any kind of a gloss clear coat down first where the decals were placed. And so going over a flat paint, you know, they did silver underneath a little bit. If I were to do it again, I would have just locally brushed some Pledge Floor Care Finish, formerly known as Future, uh, where the decals go. Uh, so then that way they go down over a glossy surface. I didn't think about it at the time, unfortunately, because I was kind of getting in a hurry. So here's the final airplane with all of the markings applied. Man, the airplane looks so good and is a really convincing rendition of the Kefir. Better than I expected, truthfully. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. You know, I hope you found this video helpful. An airbrush, it's a great tool to have in your arsenal, so consider getting one if you don't have one. And know that the more you use it, the more comfortable you'll be with it uh, and the better results that you'll get. So give it a try. It's something that can be used over and over again for detailing and painting entire models uh, like we've done here. Also, on the markings, you know, we went third party this time just for simplicity, but if you would like some tips on making your own markings, I did a discussion on that you know, a while back, which you can find by clicking the icon in the upper right corner. Now, in our next episode, we're going to cover panel lines and weathering and show you how to do that. We'll be using a pencil for panel lines and then some airbrushing and acrylic washes for the weathering, you know, which should really bring this airplane to life. So be sure to subscribe to get that when it posts. Also, I have a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, uh, on what we've covered here with links to everything. So be sure to check all that out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.